it's my very great pleasure to say congratulations to Bank M Tanzania PLC and of course yourself on the award for Best Commercial Bank of the Year Tanzania. Many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would say that this is a very tremendous achievement for us and truly being the best commercial bank in Tanzania would have not been possible without the true support of our very loyal customers, my hard-working colleagues in Tanzania, our directors, regulators, and also my very hard-working CEO, Sanjeev Kumar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's start by thinking about um, the banking sector in Tanzania. How has that evolved over your career to date? I would say that um, my career has evolved over the years which I've practiced banking. I actually joined the banking industry in 1999 when I just completed my advanced diploma in business administration. At that time, I would say there were a lot of challenges as well as opportunities. And the banking industry in those days, I would say in Tanzania, it was uh, not very developed in terms of banking technology. Largely the banking technology was concentrated in core banking software and that was it. So the rest of the transactions were done manually. And actually banks had to hire a lot of people to do few number of transactions because of lack of proper technology into banking services. But since then, the um, banking technology has evolved with time and a lot of changes has happened in the industry. I would say the opportunities which were there at that time, which are not there at the moment, is that banks were able to charge quite a lot on hefty charges in terms of for, pay for payment solutions, as well as simple banking services like internet banking. In those days, very few banks, like one or two banks, only had internet banking services, and they would pay like only they'll pay as much as 200 to $250 per month only for subscription for internet banking, which in most places is now at free of cost or not even more than $20 per month. And things like payment solutions bank would charge even up to $500 per month, which was quite hefty, I would say, in, in, at, at the modern times. But since then, a lot of things have started evolving, a lot of banking technology into almost everything which the banks are doing. and that is where Benkem came into the market and we were able to bring in a lot of innovative products and make better use of right banking technology to move up to the scale. And thinking about the kind of operational challenges that arise from expanding products and service range, how, how do you manage that in your career? How do you keep abreast of all of those challenges as new developments, new products, new services come online? In our context, operational challenges are there to be managed. You cannot move along, along in the banking industry without managing operational challenges. So what we normally do is that we make sure that we are on the spot, we have the right technology, the right skills and the right people to be able to execute our, uh, development of products on an ongoing basis. And just to cite an example of um, how you can use the technology in the right way to develop products, we have actually entered into a partnership with the Tanzania Revenue Authority, we call it TRI. That was four years ago. We were able to develop a very exciting product whereby we were able to serve customers to pay taxes in only five minutes. And this was a very exciting product. It was a runaway success for the bank. And at the moment we are talking of actually collecting up to 75% of customs and excess duties in the country. So we can see the way we can use our operational challenges to transform a lot of products and bring exciting new things and in, in also increase our revenues at the same time. So, I mean, that's one example yeah. of a kind of differential for, for Bank M. Yeah. What other examples do you think make Bank M stand out in a very competitive marketplace? I would say that's also a very interesting question because um, we have been able to stand out from the crowd because of the different products which we have evolved over with time. The first thing being we are the first African bank to open um, 12 hours a day, that is from 8 a.m. up to 8 p.m. in the evening. And secondly is through Sunday to Sunday banking. We call it Sunday to Sunday. Ideally what it means is that the bank is open for banking services from Monday up to Sunday and 12 hours a day as I said earlier. And 
The third factor is we have something which you call safety standard guarantee, whereby the bank commits to deliver and process transactions at a pre-agreed time. And if we're not able to deliver or do execute the transaction with the pre-agreed time, we have to compensate the client on a specific commission rates, which are also at pre-agreed rates in a very, very transparent manner. Other key differential factor is our client coverage ratio. Each member of staff is expected to look after only three clients. This is a very high scale ratio in the African market and this is one of the key factors which have made us very successful in the market because we are able to provide the undivided attention and personal touch to our clients. Very good. And thinking about setting yourself apart from the crowd in the future, how do you plan to do that? Being a corporate bank, it's not very difficult for us because we do not look at um, acquiring big number of clients. We are not saving the mass market. And Tanzania being still a small market in terms of financial services, we'll still be able to manage this because we'll recruit more staff, but also not in a very large space because we don't expect to have a lot of clients coming and flocking into our bank for opening accounts. So thinking about some of the kind of opportunities and challenges, how would you describe your leadership style and how has this impacted on the work of Bank M? My leadership style is more of coaching and also I would say transformational uh, as well as situational type of leadership. Because in an emerging market you should be able to be flexible at all times and be able to cope with different challenges which come through to you. So what I normally do is actually I train people to be able to take up challenges and transform them to opportunities. I actually coach people to always think out of the box be innovative, bring up new ideas, which will actually bring in, of course, obviously more revenues to the bank and also increase the balance sheet size of the bank. And talking of flexibility, um, let's think about the kind of footprint of Bank M at the moment. Would you like to expand Bank M's geographic scope further into the future? Yes, that is definitely something which you're looking up at the moment. We have a threefold uh, expansion strategy at the moment. The first one being we are looking up to opening four new branches in Tanzania in the current year. That will be within Dar es Salaam and also some parts in the southern zone of the country. And secondly, we are looking up at, um, we are actually in the process of setting up uh, the first mortgage finance bank in the country. And that is in partnership with IFC Washington as well as HDFC in India. This is the Housing and Development Finance Bank in India and also two highly reputed partners in the country. And thirdly is we are now in the process also of um, getting into Kenya in a neighboring country in the East African region through a non-operating holding company. So ideally what you're looking at is towards the end of this year we should also be in Kenya. And in terms of growth outside Tanzania, apart from Kenya, is East Africa the, the, the primary area you'll be looking at in terms of your, your kind of five-year plan? No, our expansion strategy is not only limited to Kenya because the main vision is actually looking at um, presence between eight to ten countries in the sub-Saharan African region because what we have seen over the years is that these uh, countries in the eastern and uh, southern Africa, they actually have more of a very common business tradition and even some of the clients which we already have, have their businesses operating in these different countries. So it will also be easy for us to expand our footprint, footprints within those areas. And, and thinking about that kind of expansion, which sectors locally and, and perhaps globally do you expect to significantly affect the Tanzanian and the wider African economy over the next couple of years? In the recent past, um, probably I would say two years back now there's been a lot of excitement in the east african region as well as tanzania because we have um, actually discovered deposits of oil and natural gas which will actually attract a lot of foreign direct investment in the east african region as well as tanzania and with more foreign direct investment what we are overseeing is that there's a lot of potential in terms of the growing industries this includes manufacturing industry, telecom, as well as infrastructure industry in the country. And in some of those sectors, there's been quite significant growth at the kind of the last quarter of 2014. What do you think the key factors for growth for Bank M are going forward? The key factors for Bank M going forward is that we have been able to have significant inroads in terms of um, 
acquiring large business families in the country. We have more, acquired more than 300 um, family businesses in the country. And what we are seeing now is besides retaining our focus on the corporate businesses, we're also looking into institutional banking. We believe that institutional banking is our next area of growth over the next five years. What we see in the institutional banking sector is that it will offer a big potential in terms of vast resources and excellent potential also in terms of balance sheet growth because they have a lot of requirements in terms of transactional banking services which other banks in the market are not offering at the moment. So we're, we're kind of crystal ball gazing a little mm -hmm. but if we if we kind of think about your achievements to date what what are you most proud of in terms of what you've contributed to Bank M? I would say that I was fortunate to be among the fine founding members of the bank in 2007 when I joined the bank. I joined as the head of cash management at that time and since then I was able to take up additional responsibilities and I was able to learn different things within the banking uh, industry that is uh, corporate finance, lending, private banking, institutional banking, investment advisory etc. So this has actually built up my career path and now I feel that I'm able to take up a lot of other responsibilities in the bank to the level that I've also been a senior member of the bank. Thinking about learning, and, and you've touched upon the kind of importance of your staff mm -hmm. and, and coaching them and mentoring them, what are the qualities that you look for in members of the enterprise? I believe in hiring for attitudes because we also see that technical skills can be trained, people can acquire technical skills with training, and what I always look for is that if the person has the right attitude, and if you train this person properly, then definitely you're going to get the right output from them. And, and I've seen there's a phrase uh, kind of in terms of coaching people in the bank of being both kind of coach and a pace setter in terms of the approach that's taken. How do you set about inspiring and motivating your employees? In terms of aspiring, first, the first thing is that you have to be the role model. If you're not the role model, then people will take a different track. So the most important thing is that you become the role model, inspire them to take challenges and lead them to thinking out of the box. They should not always think along the lines which they see because it's a growing market. People have to always have to grow up with new ideas to be able to be successful in the bank. Now earlier on you mentioned how technology has uh, really transformed banking during your career. And uh, I know that Bank M's invested in some blue chip technology to manage back office processes. Yeah. But how do you manage the balance between human and electronic interactions when it comes to delivering customer service? I would say that technology is the backbone in financial services. So what we've actually done is on an ongoing basis, we continue developing new products. We've invested quite a lot in terms of banking technology and we continue doing that because we believe that's the only thing which will take us forward. But at the same time, despite having all this new technology and a lot of sophisticated products within the bank, we also try and maintain our client-centric approach whereby we're able to provide undivided attention to our clients, give the personal touch to ensure that we are not very far from our clients, and also we have very high caliber relationship team taking care of our clients. You mentioned the customer satisfaction guarantee. What kind of score are you, do you achieve on that on an annual basis? For a long time, we've been achieving levels of between 70 to 80, but from the beginning of this year, we're actually achieving up to 99.5%. Our clients keep sending emails to us almost on a regular basis that they're very happy because whenever we refund them, they send emails back to us not believing that really a bank has refunded some money to the client because of not being able to deliver to their promises. Okay. Now we're being very positive, um, but what are some of the biggest challenges you think faced by a bank operating in your region and how do you meet them? We have a lot of um, graduates coming out from the university studying different kinds of subjects, but the challenge, biggest challenge we have is having enough seasoned bankers or in other terms business managers who can take up quickly additional responsibilities or even managerial positions in the bank or even other private sectors. We've even developed specific training programs in the bank which can actually cater for specific needs of different people working in different departments within the bank. So for instance, we have special trainings for trade finance, 
customer service, branch operations, compliance and anti-money laundering, trade finance, cash management, relationship manager and so forth. So as soon as we hire people, we orient them through these programs and also on an ongoing basis, this is done for new as well as existing staff members to keep up to the speed and make sure that they're able to cope with their responsibilities which have been assigned to them. I'm thinking about your workforce as a community in a way that you're training and, and motivating and inspiring. Bank M also seems to focus quite heavily on very active CSR initiatives. Um, give, give me some examples of those. At Bank M, um, first of all, we have our CSI policy. We call it Money at Heart, which is branded um, similarly to the rest of the banking products. And with Money at Heart, we are actually focusing on four main sectors. First being educational projects, and then community health projects, environment conservation, and also supporting local artists and entrepreneurs. One of those is, the, is supported by a, a marathon that takes place every year, is that right? Yes, yes, you're very right. We're actually associated with um, five main partners. And what we always do is that we engage ourselves with very reputable partners. And the two factors which you look at whenever we engage with these partners is that we make sure that the projects create a big impact to the community and also at the same time they are sustainable. What we are trying to do is actually we ensure that we are supporting projects which are creating a large impact in the community as well as projects which are very sustainable. Sustainability in terms that each project should not be less than five years. So we take a projects which have a turn of between three to five years, even more than that, because we really want to see the change with these projects have been making in the community which we're living in. You've mentioned uh, the importance of, of working with really good partners. Which partners are you engaging with at the moment? We are actually engaging with five main partners, and these are highly reputable partners. The first one being the Rotary Clubs in Tanzania whereby every year we organize a marathon within Dar es Salaam. It's called the Rotary Dar Marathon. It's now becoming an iconic event in Dar es Salaam and we've been sponsoring this event for more than six years now. And what so far we've done with them is we've been able to plant more than 20,000 trees in Dar es Salaam. We have provided water and sanitation facilities in more than 50 schools in Dar es Salaam. We've supported them in construction of a state-of-art um, oncological pediatric center at Muimbili Hospital. This is the national hospital in Dar es Salaam. This center is actually providing entrepreneurial subjects for students which are studying at the University of Dar es Salaam. And the second partner which we have is Benjamin Mkapa HIV Foundation. This was jointly founded by the ex-president of Tanzania, Benjamin William Kappa and Bill Clinton, the former US president. The Benjamin Kappa Foundation, they actually train and equip doctors to go to the remote areas of the country. And also the other responsibility is to treat people who are infected with HIV and also construction of laboratories and also operating theaters in remote areas of Tanzania. The third partner which we have is uh, Hassan Maja Trust. This is founded by the um, former ambassador of Tanzania in the U.S. as well as U.K., Ambassador Maja. What we're doing with the Hassan Maja Trust is supporting them to provide desks across the country. And so far, they've been able to provide more than 20,000 desks across the country, especially in primary schools in the remote areas. And the fourth partner which we have is KPMG. We've associated with KPMG to coordinate and also facilitate the um, top 100 mid-sales companies awards which happen on an annual basis in Tanzania. This is actually a regional initiative. It's also happening in Kenya as well as in Uganda. So we're also the main sponsors of these awards in Tanzania. And the fifth uh, partner is AMREF Health Africa. With AMREF Health Africa, what we do is supporting their Stand Up for African Mothers campaign. In this project, AMREF Health Africa is facilitating training of 3,800 midwives in the country and this is a goal which is to be completed by year 2017. So we're the third year now and they're actually progressing quite well at the moment. In addition to that, Benkem is also considered to be the highest contributors in community development in the country in terms of CSR initiatives 
and in every year we contribute not less than two million dollars in our CSR initiatives. And presumably the investment that Bank M makes in CSR projects like those you've just been describing also helps the bank uh, in terms of awareness and in terms of kind of public recognition uh, and helps attract uh, the kind of bright talents that you need to kind of keep going forward as you've been describing. Yes, we've been able to gain a significant public recognition and in terms of both customers as well as prospective employees because a lot of people come to us because they've seen us supporting the community to a great extent. At the same time, we also get a lot of applications from people who want to work with the bank. So finally, Jacqueline, what role do you think your education and background in industry has played in developing your approach to banking services? My education has been very helpful in terms of uh, developing my career in banking because I studied business administration, which has actually encouraged my way of working into being very flexible and even the way you think it means that you think in a situational basis so your thinking has to change according to the environment and the different business situations which you actually interact with on a day-to-day -day business. This has actually taken my career at different levels. For example, 10 years ago I was supposed to be installing internet banking at clients' premises and those days we were using modems so this process would take almost one to two hours and it was a very lengthy and cumbersome process which was done manually. So with time I've been able to use my knowledge into developing my skills in banking. I actually completed my MBA course as soon as I joined Bank M in 2007 and I had the opportunity to, to practice immediately what I'd learned in my MBA course because I was expected including my other senior members in the bank as well, to create a conducive environment, train new recruits, prepare manuals, prepare client proposals as well as product presentations, and also at the same time acquire new relationships, very new relationships, so actually going out to the market and source new clients of the bank. And this would probably be one of the highest points in my banking career. A final thought, Jacqueline, during the series of interviews that I've been doing for the magazine, you're the first woman uh, that I've interviewed. How does being female in the world of Bank M work? Oh, that is pretty interesting. <laughs> and I've actually been experiencing this situation of being the only female in almost every meeting which I attend, being in Tanzania or in different places. and. What I would say is that Benkem is one of the proud employers who have been able to achieve gender parity since 2012. Benkem has been one of the few banks in the market which has been able to achieve gender parity of 50% female staff and 50% of male staff, which is one of the very differential factors of the bank compared to the other banks in the market and probably even in the region. Well, it's been a great pleasure talking to you today, Jacqueline. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you.